with revenues and costs projected, we build the foundation of the income statement. Now let's dive into the details starting with depreciation. Projecting depreciation accurately is critical to ensuring the model reflected the real value of assets over time. I'll walk you through it step by step. Hello friends, welcome back to Wall Street Mojo. We are discussing financial modeling in Excel step by step. And we have completed four parts of this step. Creating the structure for the financial model, then analyzing the historical financial statements, projecting revenues, and in the most recent video, we looked at how to go about projecting the cost. Now, step number five is all about projecting depreciation, right? And if I go back to this uh, model here, where we looked at the income statement previously, what we saw was that uh, depreciation was kind of left vacant, right? So now is the opportunity to actually find out how much is the depreciation for the future years. And for that, we will be using this tab that is depreciation and capex. So these are also called as supporting schedules, right? So if you go to this index, you will see that there are these three statements. Income statement, balance sheets and cash flows, these are the primary statements. So when it comes to three statement modeling, we are saying that project the income statement, balance sheets and cash flows. And these are called as supporting schedules because what we are doing here is that projecting each and every line item with respect to, let's say, depreciation capex. The objective is to forecast depreciation and capital expenditure for the future years in this tab. Okay, so supporting schedule. Now, with that in mind, let's now also look at the case study if we have been provided with any more details on capital expenditure. So based on that, we'll figure out how to go about the projections, right? So let's scroll here. We have been provided with some inputs. Apex solution capex strategy for the next five years is aligned with revenue growth projections, okay? So we've been provided with the numbers as well that Capital investment over the next five year period is 10,000, 11,500, 13,000, 13,500, and 15,000. So, we have been provided with these numbers, but sometimes what happens is that uh, these numbers may not be available to you like the way it is here. So, in that case, you'll have to do the projections. You'll have to figure out how has the capital expenditure, uh, you know, expense for the company has been historically and based on that you make an assumption so here again it's very simple we just know these numbers we'll just take it directly so let me do one thing we will we have this uh, section here right beginning ppe capital expenditure depreciation and net ppe so first thing first what i'll do is i'll put these numbers here okay then i'll explain what's going on within this depreciation capex tab okay so this is 10,000, right? Then we have 11,500. Then what else? 13,000. Then 13,500 and 15,000. Okay. So this is the capital expenditure. So if you look at a company's point of view, this is the amount of investment that the company needs to do in order to make the revenue sustainable in the future. Okay. So that's the committed capital expenditure. Now, coming to what's the objective of this depreciation capex schedule? First is to project the depreciation for the future years and then also find out what will be the net property plant and equipment number. So, in order to explain what and what's going on here, I would like you to think of this equation B A S E. Okay. Base equation. Base means you have a beginning balance, right? So in this case, you have beginning balance of property, plant and equipment, right? Now, during the year, if you're purchasing any property, plant and equipment, that will be A, that is addition, okay? So in this case, we are referring to this part as capital expenditure, right? So this will be the addition to the property, plant and equipment, which you already own at the start of the year, right? So we call this as capex, all right? Now, what we'll subtract is basically the amount that gets depreciated, right? So depreciation is a non-cash item, but uh, you have to allocate the cost, right? So this depreciation reflects the allocation of cost from the fixed assets. So this will get depreciated. This is 
S means subtract. Okay. This is depreciation here. And E is nothing but your ending balance. And ending balance here is net PPE or property plant and equipment. So you understand base equation. So when we will apply this equation here, we'll be adding capital expenditure because it is A here. Okay. Now what we also need is the beginning balance. Okay. So the beginning balance, the way we write the formula is we'll link this net PPE. Where will we get this net property plant and equipment number? We'll get this number from what? We'll get it from the balance sheet, right? So here, if you see this, this is 31400. This is net property plant and equipment. Net property plant and equipment means that depreciation has been removed from it. And it is the actual post depreciation number. Okay. So this is for year actual three. Okay. So this will become your beginning balance for the next year. Okay. For year one. So we have B, we have A. What we need is D, that is a depreciation. We'll calculate that as well. And the final number will be ending, that is E. Okay. So the formula will be this plus this minus depreciation this will give you the ending balance okay so what i can do is i can just copy and paste this across for all other years as well and net pp formula as well so what do we see here except for depreciation we have all the numbers right the net pp numbers we have it but once we calculate the depreciation this net pp numbers will get automatically adjusted Okay, so far so good, right? Now coming to the depreciation expense. Now here what we are uh, doing is that this is uh, a typical IT company, right? In IT company, usually capital expenditure is not huge and depreciation usually is a very small or insignificant uh, number as a percentage of revenue. So usually in these type of companies, you just don't uh, kind of make an elaborate depreciation schedule like you know you don't look at each assets and depreciation um, on the basis of what's the overall gross value and the useful life and then calculate using different uh, depreciation methods like the straight line or the wdv method here we are just taking it in a very simple way we know what has been the historical revenue we know what is the historical depreciation so we'll see what the trend has been historically as a percentage of revenue and we will just forecast on that basis, okay? So, since this is the first model, we are keeping things simple. Otherwise, depreciation schedule is a very elaborate one. And uh, all of that, we have taken it in a different, uh, you know, course on financial modeling. But uh, here, since this is an introductory one, we have just kept things simple, right? So, let's get started here with the revenue. Let's link it up from the income statement, right? We have this number here, 25500. So this is for the actuals and I can copy and paste this across for all other years as well, right? Now, how about depreciation? Depreciation numbers, we already have this here. This is 1200, 1400 and 1700, okay? So let's copy and paste it. And now let's find out what is depreciation as a percentage of revenue, okay? So depreciation as a percentage of revenue comes out to be 4.7% for actuals 1. 4.4 and then 4.4. So what we can do here is that in the future years as well, we can assume that this trend would continue. So depreciation as a percentage of revenue will remain at 4.4%. Okay, so that's what I'm assuming. And uh, please note, I'm reiterating that this is a very simplified version of uh, figuring out what depreciation amount will be. Usually there is a very uh, comprehensive schedule you are expected to create based on each of the type of assets like land, building and useful life. So we do that elaboratively, but since this is your first model, we are keeping things simple. Okay, so let's figure out what's the depreciation here. Depreciation will be 4.4% of the overall revenue okay so here we get this as 2023.7 and copying and pasting it for other years we get these numbers as well okay so we have found the depreciation numbers now we can link it here right the depreciation if we link it here this will be equal to 2023 and what do we see the net pp numbers get 
automatically adjust it right so the objective of this depreciation capex schedule was to figure out what is the depreciation number and what is the net property plan and equipment number and uh, we also needed the capital expenditure numbers which we already were provided by the management themselves right so with that we have done step number 5 that is projecting uh, the depreciation and capex but there is one more step that is needed here and that is all about linking it back to the respective cash flow statement okay so i am keeping this step for the later part if you look at this um, step number 13 completing the cash flows uh, i am keeping it for step number 7 but for now please note that each and everything which we have found out here like the net property plant and equipment this will go to the balance sheet right we can link it likewise capital expenditure numbers we can link it to the cash flow statement right and this depreciation we can link it back to the income statement so we can do this right away here now that we have these numbers let's link this depreciation amount okay so here this is all right so we are done with the depreciation now uh, if you look at the amortization here we see that uh, if you look at the balance sheet actually uh, balance sheet only has fixed assets right and it, when it comes to intangible assets is basically zero so there will be no amortization as such so for amortization we'll keep these numbers as zero for the future years so i'll just put this as zero and uh, what i'll also do is unhighlight this so as to let you know that this is now fully complete and please note that since depreciation is coming from a different sheet like depreciation capex schedule we see that this is color coded as green in color okay so very important from a financial modeling point of view that you know the color coding and the formatting as well as we do